Did you just get your very first GPS camera drone and you are terrified to take it out of the box and launch it into the air for fear of crashing it? Or maybe you've gotten past that stage, but now you're looking for the best way to learn how to fly it and get the most out of it? If either of those apply to you, then stick around because I'm gonna show you how to overcome those fears and get to flying and be on your way to creating beautiful aerial masterpieces. And for those of you who are worried about crashing your drone or having it fly away from you forever, I'm gonna share some statistics later on in the video that will actually surprise you. So let's get started. Hi everyone, you're watching 51 Drones and my name is Russ. I've been flying drones now for about five years and in this video, I'm gonna show you the necessary steps to follow to ensure that you don't crash your new drone. And I'll show you some ways that you can become more comfortable flying that amazing new device. For the most part, I will be describing how to fly DJI drones, but most of the concepts will apply to any GPS camera drone. I plan to make more beginner tutorials like this in the coming months, so consider joining me as I try to help you on your journey. When you first open that box, it's a rush of feelings. It's a combination of both excitement and anxiety that's difficult to restrain. Now my first bit of advice is to watch as many tutorials on YouTube as you can. See what others have gone through before you launch that drone into the air. More than likely you've already done this if you bought your drone yourself, but if you received it as a gift, it's a good idea to watch a few videos first. Now you've chosen to watch this video and that's a great start, but there are thousands of others available out there. So I'm gonna link some of the best ones in the playlist right up here and then also down in the video description. So be sure to save those videos on your watch later list so you can come back to them for reference. The next thing that you need to do is charge up all of your batteries and then download the appropriate app. Now most drone batteries will have some charge when you open the box, but don't fly it with these partially charged batteries. These are smart batteries and they all need to be fully charged that first time before you use them. Even though you might be in a hurry to fly, plug them in and then while you wait, download the software to your mobile device and watch some of those tutorial videos that I just told you about. After you have all the batteries and the controller charged up and the app installed, go ahead and connect your mobile device to your controller, turn everything on and open up the app. Now more than likely you will be asked to update the software. Make sure you do that to ensure that you have full functionality of your drone. Throughout the time you own your drone, you will be asked to update that software periodically. I recommend doing this every time because many updates include exciting new features, keeping your experience fresh and interesting, and also your drone flying more safely. Now it's time for the fun. It's time to get those motors running and launch it up into the air. Now you may be tempted to launch inside your home and I cannot stress enough how bad of an idea this is, especially if you've never flown a drone before. This is actually one of the most common places that people crash their drone is inside their house. It's not only because of the confined space, but also because it may be difficult for that drone to lock on to GPS, making it very unstable. So go outside, find the most wide open space that you have available and launch from there. Try to find something like a soccer field or an open park without trees or high line wires, just a nice big wide open space. Now this next step is very important and it's another thing that if not done properly can cause a GPS drone to crash. This is to wait until your drone has GPS connectivity. It will show you on the app interface how many satellites are connected and it will tell you audibly that the home point has been set. This means that your drone will fly steady and stable. Launching before that is very risky, so wait for it. And if it doesn't ever gain GPS connection, then I suggest moving to a more open location with less interference. Basically, follow the prompts on your app. If it tells you to calibrate your compass, make sure you calibrate the compass. If it tells you to calibrate your IMU, then do that. The software will always advise you when something needs to be done and it will always be obvious. So trust the software. Now I told you about some statistics that I was gonna share with you. So here are two things that might surprise you. The two biggest fears of new drone pilots is that they will either crash their drone or it will fly away from them. And the fact is about 60% of drone pilots have crashed their drone and then 25% have had that drone fly away. Now of the flyaways, most have gotten their drone back. So that's good news. 
but the concern of new drone pilots that they will crash it is very warranted. However, the best way to avoid it is to educate yourself as much as possible about all of the risks. Hey, real quick, if you're getting any information out of this video and you wanna see more like it, consider clicking on that subscribe button to join this community. Also follow me on social media. Now, once you have everything checked, calibrated, and the app says ready to go, you can launch into the air. Now, when the drone gets into hovering position, let it sit there for a good 20 seconds or more just to make sure that it has GPS locked on. Then you can start practicing your moves. So there are five basic drills that I'm gonna tell you about that will help you become a better drone pilot. And I recommend practicing these on a regular basis to maintain your flying skills. First of all, practice your launching and your landing. I know this sounds very simple, but just like a manned aircraft, two of the most risky moments are when you're taking off and landing your drone. Always find an appropriate wide open landing space with minimal dirt or rocks or grass or trees. And if you aren't near a place like that, then try using a landing pad. Launch the drone, fly a few feet away, and then go ahead and land it. And repeat this process so you get used to how the drone acts during these moments. For the most part, the drone will safely land, but there may be times when you need to make slight adjustments as it lowers. That's why having space is so important. Next, raise the drone to about two to four meters high and use the sticks to fly in all directions. As you do this, watch how the drone moves and what it looks like as you move the sticks. So don't just watch on the screen, make sure you're watching the drone itself as you're positioning it. Having this familiarity will help you understand how the drone positions itself when it's moving in those directions. Now do the same thing and watch this little indicator on the bottom left of the screen. That's called the attitude indicator. The position of this line will correlate with how the drone is positioned relative to the horizon. This is super useful if you're flying in windy conditions, for instance, and it will let you know how hard the drone is working as it's flying. The greater that angle, the more power your drone is using, which also means that your battery is draining more quickly. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the attitude indicator and how it can relate to how safely your drone is flying. Thirdly, one of the most confusing things about flying a drone is maneuvering it as it is flying back to you or as it's facing you. All of the controls are the opposite when the drone is facing you. And it's very important to know how to fly it in this situation. So once again, fly the drone out ahead of you, position it so it's facing you and move it in all directions. This takes a lot of practice. So do these several times before you fly the drone too far away. Now, by far the most difficult skill to master when flying a camera drone as a new pilot is to both fly the drone and maneuver the camera gimbal at the same time. That's why you see so many videos online from new pilots that show the drone moving and then stopping and then the camera moving and stopping and then the drone moving and stopping again. Now this is the opposite of cinematic. If you want your video footage to look like the pros, you need to practice flying the drone and moving the camera at the same time. And yes, there are intelligent flight modes that can do much of this work for you, but there's nothing more satisfying than capturing something manually and then having it turn out so well. So here's what I recommend. Put your drone into tripod mode or cine mode so it moves more slowly and then practice moving the drone in all directions while at the same time raising and lowering that camera gimbal by using the control wheel. This means that your thumbs are on the control sticks and your index finger is on that gimbal wheel. After just a few days of practice, you will become more skilled at creating cinematic video clips that you can be proud of. The last drill that I wanna tell you about today that will have you on your way is to practice flying low and slow. When people first get a drone, the most common thing they wanna do is get way up in the air and see as much as they can. And yes, this is fun, but it's also very one dimensional. Eventually, you wanna to get to where you can fly comfortably, lower to the ground and closer to objects. Having that dynamic movement and parallax really brings the viewer into the video. It adds emotion and excitement to your projects. So after you've become a little bit skilled at controlling your drone, and you're comfortable even having it up in the air, try flying in an area that is mostly open space but maybe has one single object, like a tree or a statue or a building standing all by itself, and practice flying close to it. Again, only begin to practice this drill once you feel more comfortable flying. 
As you learn to create aerial video projects, you'll understand that it's really important to not only have wide, high angle views, but also those close up views that brings motion into the video. What questions do you have as a beginner drone pilot? I wanna get back to basics on this channel and I wanna help those of you getting into this hobby get the most out of your drone. I remember how uncertain I was when I started and I wanna be a resource for you. So consider joining the community and also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok where I post additional fun content that you won't see right here on the channel. Hit that thumbs up button if I did help you in any way today. Thank you for watching the entire video. Have a great day and as always fly safe and fly smart. Having this familiarity, huh, having this familiarity, familiar, familiarity, familiarity, <laughs> having this familiarity,